Good morning and welcome. Well, we'd like to add one more number to the mix, and that number is two. <laughs> and the latest incarnation of a legend. Yes, I think you know which legend I'm talking about. My heart is pumping, you can hear the Xbox Live champion legend right here for season two of Transylvania. Now, if you've seen this before, then you're part of Legends, Legendary Light Brigade, don't you worry about it. But if this is your first time, you're nothing but a bandwagon jumping piece of shit. You read some piece of shit magazines, who watch some piece of shit TV shows and heard about us and think that you can just come on board? It's not as easy as that. But come on, I'll show you some of my moves and maybe you can bust them when you're trying to bust some of that spotty little acne ridden teenage pussy you want. Hello folks and welcome to season 2 of Consylvania, where we get a brand new rating system. That's right, the gold ribbon, the blue ribbon and the Consylvania brown ribbon. It's very exciting isn't it? So for all the games that we'll be playing, some of them will be lucky enough to get a ribbon rating, which means a gold ribbon is something that's truly exceptional, a blue ribbon is something that we highly recommend and brown for the shite that I'll be playing. <laughs> Batman begins. It begins to bore me to fucking tears. You know, for somebody that reviews games, movie tie-ins are just the worst. Because often they're slick, they're polished, they look nice. So much money spent on them, the proper voice talent, everything. But just like in the case of this game here, one of the most boring games I've ever played. Close. I can tell you right now what this game is like. Try and imagine Splinter Cell if it were a hundred times more boring. Oh, there's Michael Caine. <laughs> See, that's what happens. For the entirety of this game, your only moment of levity is laughing at Michael Caine's voice. And why do we laugh at Michael Caine's voice? Simply because he's Michael Caine. Now, as I was saying, more boring than Splinter Cell, and a main character more boring than Sam Fisher. That's right, Batman, as a video game character, is shite. Here we go, bit of stealth, boring stealth stuff, stealth attacks, and here's a fight now. And you look, you've got a wee reputation bar that's going to go up if we battle this guy. And see, we're enjoying this fight here. Dull. Look, we can interrogate him. And we can keep interrogating him You're one of for a very long What's time. Doing very. You don't know Falcone. Yeah. He's horrible. I'm here. He isn't. And I'm worse. What's Mom. he doing? <laughs> Smuggling shipments coming from the southeast. You know, Gotham City has got a hell of a lot of pipes. Pipes everywhere, the best set of pipes in Spin Crosby. And Batman likes to climb through windows and up pipes. See, you thought that Batman was, you know, a very deep, very psychological kind of superhero. No, he's just a guy in a cape. Who <laughs> was that Michael Caine? No. I think that was Michael Caine. No. Yes, he's a guy in a cape who likes to climb along a lot of pipes and interrogate people for a very long time. Falcone brought a small army for a simple cargo drop. What's he afraid of? Fucking shut up, Batman. I think something's happening in the sewers. Oh, wonderful. Something's happening in the sewers. And what do we get in the sewers, folks? Pipes. Oh, look here, I'm packing a lock. Looks difficult, eh? No, it's fucking not. 
on look, here we go, out in the Batmobile, it's bum out. Oh, here we go, chasing down the thugs, picking up the boosts. I'm going to catch you. I'm coming. Eventually. Oh, a thug takedown. Fuck off, Batman. Here's Batman taking down a security guard. And then, he's going to operate a crane. Oh, wait a minute, are we catch here? Right away, <laughs> Is that Michael Caine? Sounds like Michael Caine. Yes, that's right, folks. We are going to hack into a crane operation device by playing this little mini game. Yep, about as hard as Pelly. So here we go, moving a crane. You know, like you've seen in all those Batman comics. Moving a crane. Fuck off, Batman. Tell me about the rabbits. But at least once you've endured the most boring game in years, you can watch an unconvinced Christian Bale play through the game, trying to keep his eyes open on a blurred out PlayStation 2 controller, because we're on Xbox here, and watch some strange footage that paints Michael Caine as a stupid old man. I'm still trying to get email on mine. My wife has to do that. I've got to get one of the things you played on, haven't I? Right. I'm still trying to get my email. Get me the hell away from this disaster. Exactly. You got a console? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You just out of school? Yeah. Yeah, what school do you go to? Well, we went high school and it's shithole. It's shithole? Is it in Glasgow? Yes. Well, what about your girlfriend here? You play video games? No. Why not? I have better things to do with my time. You never played Tetris? Tetris? Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, tell me about Tony Hawk. Did you play Tony Hawk before you started boarding, or did you start boarding afterwards? No, I started boarding afterwards because I didn't know anything about the Tony Hawk games, but my cousin got me into it. Yeah, so how long have you been boarding? About three years. You want to show us some moves? You wanna, what I want you to do, I want you to do an ollie over me, okay? Come on, try it. You can do it. Come on, you can do it. Get your skateboard. All right, here we go. Dim <laughs> 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 At last, here it is, Rails Remake of the truly, truly special Conker's Bad Fur Day, which I'm sure you're all very aware was released in the N64. 
Conker's first release was a tragic tale. It was something new, exciting and fresh. Unfortunately, the Nintendo 64 at the time wasn't. It was kind of like a funeral, a big busty tart stripper bursting out of a coffin, like it was a birthday cake, so Nintendo did the only thing they could have been expected to do. They made every effort to cram said stripper back into the coffin and bury it with all deceased. Well, half a decade's passed since, and now Rare have made the move to recoup some of the vast sums of cash they rightly should have made from the original. Just a glance at Live and Reloaded is enough to tell you where the majority of the programmer's time was spent. It's lovely looking. That old raunchy rough around the edges tar that was buried with the N64 has been replaced by a refined and well poised beauty. Even in this generation of consoles you have to pay the price for sparkly graphics. Just like your new stunning girlfriend will spend two hours in the bog every morning getting ready. Of the eight or ten hours or so of single player in Live and Reloaded you'll be staring at about two hours of fucking loading screens. Maybe two hours is a bit of exaggeration but they are very very noticeable. Single player mode in this, however, isn't the hook for a number of us, or at least it wasn't for me. I wasn't expecting many big surprises from one player, so most of my attention was spent in the live aspect. And this, I'm afraid, is where my review starts to go a bit downhill, because like most who look forward to Conquer Online, I always had it in my mind that when it came out, it would be a Conquer game, which you'd play online with other players. But it ain't so though, Joe. Because we threatened Microsoft enough, we managed to get a preview copy, and for the first week or so on live, it was a bit quiet. But I have been on a handful of times since general release. And the reason for my lack of enthusiasm for the live option is something that our American cousins are all too happy to point out. It's frequently been compared to Halo Online, which hurts my game and heart a bit. It just wasn't what I was expecting. The live option gives you level specific goals and straightforward death matches and a selection of classes some of which are initially incredibly unbalanced. Don't get me wrong, on Live Conquer is a chaotic and frantic and quite exciting few hours of play, but I guess I just had a little too much faith in where I was looking forward to a bit more innovation really, rather than another shooter aimed at mainly American teens. All of the online levels are very well designed and well presented and it plays well if a little floaty, but there's nothing unique about it. Online it's just a Microsoft game, everything's there in front of you and it looks good, but at the same time, nothing's there. So the live mode isn't for me, but I'm a snobby bastard so you don't have to listen to me. So it's back to one player with me. Lovely, beautiful one player. As you're moving through the main game, if you've played the original you'll quickly notice you remember just about every inch of it, which is a testament to how great the original was. The graphics aren't the only improvement either, the camera's got better, but we'll still have you screaming in certain close situations. Your squirrel controls better too, unless you're in the back of a dinosaur. But the game carries over some things I think could have been smoothed out. There's some right bastard leaps of faith, and sometimes there's areas you can clearly get into, but you're bounced off invisibility shield, something that nowadays looks really awful. There's no completely new areas in one player, a couple of redesigned bits, like the Van Helsing style section. The game hasn't been busied up any, it's as strictly linear as it was originally. If you mill around, you'll get bored, guaranteed. But if you do what you're supposed to do, it's still really enjoyable. The characters I remember funny are, are still. As a platformer it's no Mario 64 and it's no epic unless the live option gets its hooks into you, but as a good day's entertainment it's still gold. If you've not played the original, it's a must buy. And if you have played the original and you're not adverse to online shooters then you should buy it as well. As for me I think I'll just go on holding my big busty tart stripper version in slightly higher esteem. Now I know you haven't seen this. And the best is yet to come. Think you are the only one. Not my problem. To never get it right. Not my problem. Just stick around on this lovely, lovely night. They are us. And we may be a man.
डॉट करू पेन Manfred Puncher, aka Man Puncher, get your sorry ass in here! What the fuck you think you're doing with Bob Ted Case? You know you're a fat case! Since you punched that kid's head, clean off! Kid had it coming! Had it coming! Had it what coming? He was four years old! You know how many kids you've punched? How many mans you've punched since you've been on this force? Too many men! Punch as many mans as it takes to get the job done! Case is mine, Chief! Mine! That's my face, don't my goo! Oh, no, fucking give it to the coffee boy if you don't shut up! I must search out my old master! I'll show you how it's fucking done. Master Boxhead, your clones are now ready. Now all of Man Puncher's enemies will have exactly the same nut as me. The same textures for all of the enemies? Exactly! It saves time and it's also very cost effective for the developer. Live on Link Up from Japan, Hitoki, can you hear us? Hito Hello? We're going to the footage there, Hitoki. Um, can you hear us yet? What was that game, Hitoki? Famicom Wars ga deta zo! Famicom Wars ga deta zo! Kondo wa DS de niga men da! Kondo wa DS de niga men da! No me ni komeru! No me ni komeru! No me ni komeru! No me ni komeru! Ka chan tachi ni wa nai shou da zo! Ka chan tachi ni wa nai shou da zo! Famicom Wars DS! I told you, was that Advance Wars for the D8? Can you hear us here? The magic excitement about us. Toki! Keep Kirby on the right path and out of trouble. Kirby Canvas Curse for Nintendo DS. Rated E for everyone. This guy's an idiot, man. Yeah, the talk I heard your mom's got a bobby. Got doba. Well then, what do we have here? Seven Sins in the PlayStation 2. Looks like a sexy life sim. Could be interesting. Seven sins, seven stages to play through the game. I'm going to have to keep this voice up throughout the review because I'm afraid that if I don't dissociate myself from this game, I will actually go fucking mental. Character designs is a bit like that from The Sims. The characters talk like voices, like gibberish from The Sims. Basically what you're attempting to do is to build like, relationships with little ladies by saying things to them that they like and then they will let you touch their breasts. This is the manager's wife, I am touching her breasts and now the manager has caught me and I am going to run out of the shop where I work. Because the manager has fired me from my shop job I am so stressed out 
my stress meter is a way up and I have to play a rubbish mini game to calm me down. Now I am back at work where I am fired from and the manager is chasing me to take my money off me to stop me from doing the first mission in the game, which incidentally took me 8 hours to do. 8 hours in this shop. I read on the internet that you have to be friends with the manager's wife to get past the first stage, but the manager's wife lets me touch her boobs so I don't know what the answer is. I eventually did this stage by basically loading the game up, quickly saving, then loading, then saving, then loading, then saving for hours and hours and hours. This was an experience that I didn't really enjoy. Good things about Seven Sins are like unlockable photographs of ladies that you have banged. This is a picture of me feeling Odo from Deep Space Nine's boobs. If I'm perfectly honest with you, I really can't remember the last time I played a game that's quite as bad as this. It is absolutely without question that Seven Sins is one of the worst games I've ever played. Most of the reviews that I have read of the game are mainly concerned with how shocking the morals are in the game. Whereas I was more concerned by how shockingly shite it was. I would imagine that this voice is beginning to make your head feel like mine felt when I was playing the game, so I'll fill you in on what's happening on screen now. My character has got a job at a television company is to take ladies home and nail them in front of a live television camera. Unfortunately on this occasion the lady has made me so angry that I've ran out of my own house. I'll come back later as you can see and pee in my own sink and that will calm me down. Or perhaps I could go to work and fight a woman or shag her. I've always been of the opinion that if you're over the age of 18 then you can play pretty much any game you want because it's not going to alter your behaviour in any drastic way. But digital jesters have convinced me that I was wrong because after playing Seven Sins I now realise that I'd like to rape their mothers. It looks as if my character's got lucky again and the reason why I show you this particular part of the game is because it's fairly similar to something that happened to me a few years ago. <laughs> I managed to convince a sexy model to get into the shower with me wearing her underwear and she showed me sexy pictures of herself so I got so horny I had to get out of the shower, put my clothes on, dry humper and then run out of my own house where I lived. You say you will and the next you won't One minute you want me and the next you don't You're turning me upside down Giving me the run around Don't think that I don't know I do Don't think that I won't go You watch me It isn't out of the question One minute you're kissing me So drunk, I'm so drunk. Okay, now listen, talk to me. Uh, talk. 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 talk to me. No, 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 no. There's a game called Super Monkey Ball. You get rankings, you get rankings where you get your D's, you get your C's, your B's, your A's, okay? Now, what, what would you want if you could choose? All right, if you had a choice, what would be the best thing to have? What would you want most? Would you want a DP or would you want a double A? A double A. You want a double A? A double A. 
Yeah? What about you? Yeah, okay. Want a double A? That's good. I like these girls. You never played Mario Brothers? No. No, why not? I just dance. I just do like dancing up there. You just do the dancing? Well, what, is, what kind of dancing is he? Rock and roll jiving. Rock and roll jiving? And it's, it's up there? Now, if she was a video game, if Lisa was a video game, okay, then how would you, how would you review her as a video game? <laughs> the most beautiful video game I've ever played. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. And uh, you know what about what about uh, the graphics? What about the visuals? Oh, you've got to have all the megapixels there. <laughs> it's all going on there, yeah. And it wouldn't be a multiplayer game at all, no. No, no. <laughs> okay. Well, listen. Thanks for talking to us. Uh, we can give you we can give you a web address and you can come and see it. So if you wanna. Um, www.photoshootla.tk All right? Check it out. It's just we even day PC games. Every day? Every day? You're a fucking sellout. I'm a sellout? Who am I a sellout? Fuck, that's pish, man. No way am I a sellout. It's roasting on here, man. Oh, telling you. What the fuck's that? What's that? It's not in right. I can hear her talk to me. Oh, you fucking... She talks not, to me. That, that half of that is mine. I can mine. hear her talk. No, she's all... No. Don't think Give so. Give me a... Watch. Sh she's saying something. Fucking fuck. Man. She's real, but... She is real. Mon. Mon and my... Mon and my mouth. Hello, folks, and welcome to the first ever PC review on Consylvania. Thanks to those kind people at Alienware. Kiss, kiss. Now listen, I don't know anything about Battlefield. I didn't play the first game because I'm not the biggest fan of first person shooters. That's the truth. Sure, Half-Life 2 and its ilk are fantastic, um, but they're not the norm. The norm is these very mundane, very boring games. But look, Battlefield 2 is the distillation of the strategic first-person shooter down to its purest and greatest of essences. And it's also a big fat shitty stick in the eye of everybody that says that PC gaming is poor-faced. This is the best fun I've had since probably Resident Evil 4. Now I'm sure that as I've been going on you've been enjoying the visual delights of this game. Here's me destroying a tank with my skills. Here's me flying in a helicopter. That's right, that's me flying. That's me shot out the sky. This game you feel as if you can go anywhere and do anything, of course you can't. The maps are limited to small, medium and large scalable maps for different types of strategic battles. Now that's fine. We like limitations. As long as within those limitations, within those barriers, you can have as much fun as you like. And you can. You can drive about in jeeps, you can go solo, you can be a lone wolf, you can take on people yourself, take on tanks yourself, snipe yourself, or you can work in teams. You can work under a tight command and feel as if you're actually playing some important part. And you can be that commander, you can be that rootin' tootin' son of a gun, you can stand back, you can be spotting enemies, you can be sending artillery strikes, you can be sending him there, you go there, go die for me there, die for me there. Very high pressure. Very high pressure but great fun and something everybody should try. And also, you should try the voice communication. Because when you play in a server where everybody's running about with voice comms turned on, it's something special. It's a truly, truly, truly special experience. Of course, when you're the fella on the ground, you should still be playing for your team. Sometimes you can be spotting enemies. There we go, spotting a tank there. You know your commander knows that a tank is there. Everybody can keep track of this. Watch, this is one of my little lone wolf attacks here. And a jeep, my own base. A couple of enemies came up in tanks, parked alongside one of my tanks. I ran up right in the middle tank. Go on, son, run you come. And I'll pay for that. See, there you go. Very nice. Love to end this story by saying that I escaped for this um, predicament, but that didn't happen. But this is the strength of this game. Every night you play it, you will have little moments of heroics. Little moments you'll be boring people about for days and days and days and days. And God knows Ryan knows about that because I've been doing it. Here I am as a gunner on the side of a helicopter. It's just like that film, Platoon. The one about the the platoon in Vietnam. Now let me catch my breath for a second. What is Battlefield 2 about, Robert? Well, let me tell you. It's about capturing command points. It's about winning a battle. It's about domination. It's about domination. 
And you know, 64 players at once on these large maps. 64 players. And that's where all this chaos comes from. All this chaos you're seeing right now, that's where it comes from. Because 64 is a big number. And the community of players thus far, fantastic. If you're a medic and you give somebody what they need, you bring them back to life, you give them a med pack, they thank you. If you save a guy, if you go into a building and you save a guy, you pull him out of that mess, he thanks you. Because every player in Battlefield 2 is united. Every player is in the same predicament. It feels like you're caught in a war. Fear like this that you share with other players when a tank comes round the corner and it's just you and him. Moments like this, whereas a sniper, you can save a couple of guys by popping the driver in a car and you feel like, mm, damn, damn, it's all right that I killed all the wee birds because I saved some guys in a game. And Christ, let's be crass for a moment and talk about how beautiful it looks. Sometimes I go into an empty server and just drive about in a boat and just look at things like some mad spastic. And me, when my daughter sits on my knee in 20 years time, when she's 20 and asks me, Daddy, what did you do in the war? I'll say I'm a medic. I was a medic. I brought guys back to life. Clear, zap, back to life. Because that's, that's my honourable place on this battlefield. That's what I've earned while reviewing this game. Battlefield 2 is better than Counter-Strike, rule that out. Battlefield 2 is the best online combat game I've ever played. Just look at it. It's got gold ribbon written all over it. Hello and welcome to Consylvania's review of another code on the Nintendo DS. Let's look and see if this adventure game was worth the wait.